Welcome to this lecture video. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe pulses, wavefronts, and ray paths. Let's get started. Here is an example of a wave. As we've discussed before, the velocity of a wave equals its wavelength times its frequency. The wavelength is simply the length of the wave from the part of the wave, uh, one part of the wave to the next identical part of the wave. So oftentimes we start at the, um, the origin, uh, but in this diagram, they started somewhere else. So you can see there's a down going portion of the wave here. So if we start here and we go, the next time we get to that down going portion is right there. And so this distance between these two points is one wavelength. The height of the wave is its amplitude measured from the zero mark. And the frequency is the, uh, let's see, let's actually write that down. Frequency is one divided by the period of the wave. The period is how long it takes to make one um, repeated iteration. So next I really wanna talk about pulses uh, we might see in a seismic waveform. So a pulse, especially the first initial pulse is gonna be generated by some sort of energy source. Right, so possible sources of energy, you could have a vibrating metal pad attached to a, a truck of some sort, sending pulses of energy into the ground that are gonna bounce around down there and uh, reflect and refract back up to your instruments. Uh, very commonly, especially in surveys that are done sort of by undergraduates, um, you use a metal strike plate and you have a hammer with a trigger um, on it and you just slam that mallet into the strike plate as hard as you can and as soon as that motion is captured by the trigger um, that's the t equals zero in the computer and then you're going to have instruments laid out to collect that seismic uh, data you can send energy into um, the subsurface via um, an air gun or a dynamite explosion, and that's gonna send a lot of energy into the surroundings, creating seismic waves. An earthquake is, of course, a source of energy for seismic waves as well. And um, really just any seismic source, these are examples of multiple seismic sources. You can also use shotguns, anything that's gonna send vibrational energy into the ground where it's going to travel through the medium and eventually come back up to your recording instruments. Regardless of how you choose to send that energy into the ground, the goal is to create a distinctive pulse that you'll be able to recognize in your instruments. So if your recording instrument is very nearby to your seismic um, energy source, often called a shot, um, then you are going to have a really tight uh, pulse detected by your instrument, like that shown here. However, the farther away that you get from that instrument, the more spread out that energy waveform is going to be, so that actually it can become more and more difficult to identify that initial energy source the farther away from the source that you are. How that's going to look on an actual uh, waveform that's recorded by the instrument uh, is often depicted like this. So your T0, time T0, the moment this mallet hits the strike plate is recorded by the computer. That's when the instruments basically start recording data. After some time, uh, that wave is going to travel through the ground and come to the instrument. And so this pulse represents um, when the, that wave is recorded by the instrument, right? So what we're doing in seismology, we're actually looking for different pulses representing energy that has traveled through the ground and then using the timing of the arrival of those pulses to tell us something about the medium that the waves traveled through. We have multiple waves of ways of depicting these waves underground. Um, the two most frequent ones are to draw wave fronts and to draw ray paths. 
So a wave front shows the front of that energy source, right? So if you have an energy source, it's going to send energy out in every direction. And if you want to know sort of the status of that energy at any point in time, well, it's going to be some distance away from where it started. And then at some later time, it's going to be farther away. And so the circle lines that I'm drawing, those represent wave fronts. Ray paths are the dirt show the direction of the wave, right? So the front shows how far away it's gotten from the source. The ray shows the path that it takes through the ground. So if the path is straight out, then the ray is just going to be straight. It's only going to bend or curve um, or reflect or refract if it hits, um, basically if the underlying uh, velocities of the material change uh, as it's moving through the medium. It's important to note that wave fronts and ray paths are always perpendicular to one another. So if this ray was to bend in some fashion, then the wave front would also bend, okay? So wave fronts show you the location of the wave at any point in time, especially in uh, relation to where it started. And the ray path shows you uh, the path that that energy has taken through the medium. So the rays show you the direction and the wave fronts show you sort of the greater extent that that wave has traveled. In general, we're going to be working with uh, ray paths, but it's super important to understand both. So let's test yourself. Can you draw wave fronts representing the path of energy through the ground when this seismologist strikes the mallet on the strike plate? Go ahead and pause the video, get a piece of scratch paper, and see if you can draw these wave fronts. If you drew something like this, great job. So again, these lines indicate the path that the wave is traveling through the ground by showing us the leading edge of the energy that is emanating through the rocks. Next, I want to see if you can draw the rays that would result for, um, to demonstrate the path of energy through the ground. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can add the ray paths to your energy sketch. If you do something like this, great job. The most important thing here is that your ray paths should be perpendicular to your wave fronts at every point. And that concludes this video on wave fronts, pulses, and rays. Hopefully you have enough information to begin drawing simple diagrams of each of these given uh, specific scenarios. Thank you.